So what you're looking at is actually some home footage from my trip to Newfoundland up in Canada back in 2011. So while I'm from Long Island, my extended family actually has a lot of relatives up there who, from my understanding, were some of the first to come over to the Americas hundreds of years ago, um, probably from Ireland. This is their dog, Tori, who had an incredible ability to play fetch like you've never seen. It really just never gets old to me looking at these home videos and seeing him dive right off the bridge into the water like that. So Newfoundland is a very huge place, but getting there wasn't exactly easy. You can't really find many flights there, so what we did was we actually took a huge road trip from Long Island through New England, through Maine, through New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and we finally took an overnight ferry to St. John's, which is the de facto capital of Newfoundland. It's a very huge place, but there's only about 500,000 people who live there. The one thing that really struck me when I went there was just how nice everyone seemed to be. Everyone was friendly. Everyone acted as if they had known you for 10 years just from the moment they first met you. The relatives we stayed with, who we still keep in contact with today, they offered us our lakes, their lakeside summer house just to stay out for the entire week, no strings attached for free. They'd come and visit us every day, they'd cook for us, they'd really just make sure you really felt at home at a place that very few people have ever visited. While everyone was extremely friendly, it was pretty obvious that this place had definitely fallen upon some hardships in the last few decades or so. One thing that struck me right away was that in the town I visited, specifically Carbonier, the main store in town was a Walmart and the only other really store we could find was a liquor store. There wasn't really much to, to do in terms of going checking out some local businesses. There wasn't much of an industry. It was hard to really figure out what people had actually done there for a living. So what I learned was that the people on the island had mostly survived off a booming fishing industry that had been lasting for centuries, really. And this was mostly based around cod fishing, but what happened is in the 1990s there, the technology to fish became so much better and trawlers became more popular, which used large nets that could pretty much just scoop up anything from the seafloor to the surface. And the fish became so overfished that there was just none of them left. And as a result, you had all these fishing towns that were just completely abandoned. We just saw town after town that no one was really living in, or maybe a few people would be, but they were retired or they didn't have any work. It really changed the island permanently when the fish went away. So with the departure of the fish from Newfoundland, the a lot of the people left as well, so that's why so many of the towns were so sparsely populated. But the people who stayed, especially the young people, needed something to do for, for a living. So what they resorted to was the oil industry, which was actually beginning to boom right as the fish left. The fishing industry just had to die completely. The Canadian government stepped in and put restrictions on how much you could fish to hopefully give the cod livestock a chance to recover, but it's been a very slow process ever since. Personally, I can't really blame them for resorting to oil. It's definitely a huge industry, and if they wanted to stay there, they really had no other choice. But I think Newfoundland is a really great case study of sustainability because it shows that when you have a lifestyle based on something that's not sustainable, you're eventually going to run out of things to move onto because what's happened recently is the oil prices have dropped. So now it's not profitable to harvest oil in many instances. And that is also becoming not viable anymore. Luckily, the fish do seem to be recovering. And according to my relatives, they hope to be able to get the fishing industry going again within half a decade or so. I think the lesson from Newfoundland is that we do depend on the environment and if we don't protect it then we are going to have to change our lifestyle faster than we can realistically adapt to. Thanks for listening.